Lord be with you. And with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, Christ, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven. We beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thy Holy Ghost, to comfort us and exalt us unto the same place whither our Savior Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, Almighty God, that like as we do believe thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who have ascended into the heavens, so we may also, in heart and mind, thither ascend, and with him continually dwell, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. Charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, whom be, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. Begotten not made, being of one 
substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
just not even receive communion, that's always up to you. But the chalice will be restored along with the masks uh, being rescinded. But if you do not want to receive it, that is entirely up to you. No one's judging you either way. You know, most of Christendom went for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years without receiving a chalice. So there, there we go. So if there's any questions, you can feel free to ask me uh, afterwards. Are there any uh, other announcements that need to be made? Um, our, our printer, our toner, copier is out of toner. So I have to read my sermon from my computer. So I apologize in advance for the distracting Apple logo. I am not endorsing Apple products <laughs> over other computers. Uh, but uh, I figured you have to, I know you all want to come and hear one of my fantastic sermons. So I don't want to just ditch it because I couldn't print it or try to do it from memory. So apologies in advance. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Forty days after his mighty resurrection, our Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. In the Nicene Creed, which we just said, after we confess that he ascended into heaven, we say that he sitteth on the right hand of the Father. To some, that might imply that Jesus isn't doing anything in heaven, or perhaps he's just taken a much-needed break. That, however, is not the case. While the symbolic language of the creed does indicate that his redemptive work on earth is done, it does not mean that he is just hanging out, doing nothing. Quite the opposite. For it says in Hebrews chapter 7, 25, that Jesus ever liveth to make intercession for us. That is what he is doing in heaven. Jesus, our great high priest, is interceding for us before God the Father. As St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 34, it is Christ that died Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. What is an intercessor? An intercessor. And what does an intercessor do? Well, the etymology of the word is means a go-between. A go-between. When we talk about intercessory prayer, for example, we're talking about what we're talking about is praying to God on behalf of, of someone else. Like, oh, you know, Janet, I'll be, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for your family. I'm, I'm interceding, um, going between her and offering prayer. So an, an intercessor goes, goes between. Uh, la last week I mentioned uh, something about, you know, I think it was last week about, you know, going to your dad, like if, if, you, if you need some money or something. You know, you want to ask your dad something, you're really scared to, you, you ask your mom. <laughs> and then she works on dad. <laughs> the mom is like, a, like an intercessor. So, so it's, an intercessor is a go-between. Well, that's exactly what Jesus is. He is our intercessor, our go-between, between us and God. And this is very appropriate because he is our great high priest. And that is precisely what a priest does. A priest is a go-between, so a pontifex, which means a bridge between God and man. Now, the nature of Jesus' intercession is to plead his one oblation of himself, once offered, before God the Father. So what is he doing in heaven? He is, he is pleading himself, his offering before God the Father. We remember when Jesus was raised from the dead, in the scriptures, we see that, that he still had the marks from his crucifixion. Remember the story of St. Thomas, and I'll put my hand in your side and look at my hands and all of that. So, in heaven, what we can imagine is Jesus before the Father showing these wounds to God the Father. Look. I have suffered for their sins. I have paid the price. 
they are forgiven. This is what I have done for them. Don't, don't judge. Forgive them, Father. Just like he said on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus intercedes for us before God, showing the Father that he has atoned for all our sins, past, present, and future. Well, all of that is good and well, we do wonder about the here and now. In my daily life, and that of the apostles after the ascension in their daily lives and mission, am I and were they now left to be on their own with no help? Jesus has ascended into heaven. Okay, he's doing something up there. He's, inter he's interceding for me before the Father, but I'm, you know, I'm still kind of stuck down here in the middle of this earthly fight with all of its battles. Do I not have any help? Am I all on my own? Well, no, of course not. And hence the collect and gospel for today, which actually look forward to next week's service. It commemorates the coming of the Holy Ghost. That we prayed in the collect, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us unto the same place whither our Savior Christ has gone before. So we're praying to God, don't leave us strengthless, weak, here by ourselves, but send your Holy Ghost to strengthen us, to comfort us. And then in the Gospel, Jesus says, When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So, Next week, we commemorate that glorious event that's actually one of the most important events in the church calendar and in the Christian years, the day of Pentecost, when the very Spirit of God came and would fill the hearts of the disciples and our hearts so he would be with us wherever, wherever they went and wherever we go. So that is one way that Jesus... And the power of God remains with his people. But there's another way that God is with his disciples, and which relates back specifically to Jesus' heavenly intercession on our behalf. And that is in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Jesus instituted this sacrament on the night in which he was betrayed as a perpetual remembrance of his death. And in celebrating this sacrament, the disciples would make that event, and indeed Jesus himself as priest and victim, present again in their lives. They would represent that glorious event under the form of bread and wine until his coming again, until his second coming. The celebration of the Eucharist is our participation in that heavenly intercession that Jesus is doing that I spoke of a moment ago. We are pleading Jesus as the one true and only offering an atonement for our sins in this sacrament and ourselves to the Father in union with Jesus. We are joining in his offering and intercession. And that's why the word offer comes up the way it does during the prayer of consecration. We, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. And then a few moments later, and here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Jesus is present to us here and now in the sacrament of the altar. This is my body. This is my blood. The words are not, this is kind of like my body if you think really hard and, and, you know, stretch your mind a little bit. Or this is my blood if you feel like it is today. No, it's this is my body. This is my blood. The body given for thee to preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for thee 
to preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. So in this season of the Ascension, Ascension Tide, the glorious ascension of our Lord may on the surface imply two things, that Jesus has abandoned us and that he's not doing anything in heaven while we're stuck here on earth trying to deal with everything ourselves. Well, thankfully, neither of that is true. Rather, in the courts of heaven, he ever liveth to make intercession for us. And the way he does this is made present to us in the sacraments of the Eucharist, which he instituted and which we both offer to God and receive back from him as a strengthening gift the very real presence of Jesus himself. In Deuteronomy 31.6, Moses told the Israelites as they were journeying towards the promised land, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. This promise applies to the church as well, the true Israel, and it applies to you and me, and will continue to do so until our blessed Lord returns again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and thy holy word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that, with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, 
or any other adversity, especially those on our parish prayer list and those who we mention in the secrecy of our hearts. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant us, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them which grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Through thy most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his most glorious resurrection manifestly appeared to all his apostles, and in their sight ascended up into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, thither we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. O God in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. For that thou, thy tender mercy, didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in institutes and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to him, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merit and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we, and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy, through our manifold sins, to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this side table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to meet the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest
takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace.
remember the living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son and Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.